exactly what happens when you don't carry enough speed trying to cross a gravel bar. Hey folks, welcome back to the vlog. I am sitting here in a beautiful, well, not so beautiful Washington DC right now. It is uh, kind of gross out there actually. Uh, freezing rain, freezing drizzle, all that kind of stuff out here with a winter storm morning on the East Coast. I have not posted any build videos as of late, 99% because of my day job. I, I think I've said it before, I'm an airline pilot. I took a l extended leave of absence due to the COVID stuff and I just got back to flying. So um, what happened? I was supposed to be in Philadelphia for two days and then the Seattle snowstorm derailed that and I got stuck out there for two extra days. So. I didn't get home until Monday. I was off for just one day. And then here I am again working. So I haven't had any time to get to the mini boat, but I figured I'd put up a video while I could sitting here in my hotel, my layover hotel. Somebody had asked, hey, uh, I heard that you flew F-18s and could you um, talk a little bit about, uh, I guess kind of my past, how I got into boats, how I got into flying. So I figured I'd take this opportunity sitting here in my room doing nothing to do exactly that. So here's my my quick version of my life story. I was uh, born and raised up in a small island bound southeast Alaska town called Wrangell. Uh, and I grew up for one, my dad was a bush pilot. So I grew up around airplanes and two, we were on an island. So everybody had boats. So airplanes and boats has kind of always been my thing. The, uh, the Stikine River was kind of our playground, right uh, right in our backyard, literally. So I think I've been driving boats probably since I was, I don't know, I don't wanna exaggerate, but probably at least as young as 10 years old by myself. Uh, me and my friend, uh, best BFF for life, Scott, we'd take out our sneak out and actually steal our parents' boats. And uh, ours was a, an awesome 18 foot Lund with the 50 horse Merc. But here we are a couple 10 year olds driving around these boats. We didn't go far, but we did definitely steal them and put around the harbor and whatnot. Anyway, so I grew up around boats and and airplanes, literally both, uh, both of those. So I guess I'll talk uh, first about the flying. Um, I My parents divorced when I was, I think, 14 and I moved down to Boise, Idaho. And I have, like, I've been around airplanes my whole life, spent my, like, my childhood up to that point in the back seat of a Cessna, literally. And, but I'd never seen anything like super exciting. Uh, well, not that bush planes aren't exciting, but I'd never seen a military jet, very few airliners, other than the once daily Alaska Airlines flights that would come through town and very few helicopters, whatnot. So when I, my mom and I moved to Boise, Idaho when I was 14 and she took me out to Mountain Home Air Force Base and I saw for my first time a military jet. And man, that thing took off and it climbed straight up. It was a F-15, Air Force F-15. And that was one of the defining moments in my life. I'm like, that's the kind of flying I wanna do. I don't wanna be flying in the bush. And that, oh, they were flying such horrible weather up there um, in small planes. I wanted to do crazy stuff like that. I've always been a speed junkie and adrenaline junkie, I guess you call it. So I knew at that point that that's what I wanted to do. Fast forward about a year or two, the movie Top Gun came out. It's kind of embarrassing to admit, but Top Gun had a pretty uh, significant impact on my life because I was in the middle of high school and that's what I wanted to do. So I went off to college and the, literally the day after I graduated from college, I started taking flying lessons. So in order to be a pilot uh, in the military, you had to have a degree. Well, you had to be an officer, which means you had to have a degree and the pilot's license kind of helped pump up my resume a little bit. So I started, I was literally swinging a hammer, um, building houses. Uh, I had a finance degree and a pilot's license. And so I applied to everybody. My first choice would have been the Idaho Air National Guard. Second choice would have been the Air Force. And third choice would have been the Navy. Fourth choice would have been the Marine Corps and the Navy called first, so off I went. And in hindsight, knowing what I know about the different branches of the service now, that was a that was a golden ticket. The Navy definitely fit my personality uh, better than I think the Air Force or even the Air National Guard would have. Um, so anyway, literally, I mean, I think four days after I got the acceptance phone call, I was on an airplane flying down to Pensacola, Florida to start officer candidate school. Went through the whole uh, commissioning process, 
Then I went through primary flight training in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, flew the T-34. And I did well enough in that airplane to select, um, you go down three pipelines. It's either jets, helicopters, or fixed wing props, which is at that time it was the P-3. So I did well enough to select jets, my first choice. And off I went to Kingsville, Texas. So I spent about a year and a half in South Texas and um, flew the T-45 Goshawk and did well enough there to get my first choice of F-18s. And on the, back then they had West Coast and East Coast. So I selected uh, F-18s in West Coast, which is in beautiful, sunny Lamore, California in the Central Valley, just 30 miles south of Fresno. I spent seven years of my life when people say thanks for your service, that's what I, what I considered my service to my country was spending seven years in Lemoore, California. So I flew F-18s um, for about seven to eight years in the active duty there in Lemoore. And at that point, I still hadn't known if I was going to be a lifer, do my 20 or get out and pursue the airlines or what my plan was. So I, and that was probably the best advice anybody ever gave me is like, hey, don't make up your decision to stay or go now just wait until the time comes so you know we all had pretty long contracts i think mine was seven years after winging that uh, i had to serve so i i did i waited until that seven years was up and to make my decision and so i decided i was my biggest thing was i was tired of lamore and i was also looking at probably a three-year tour of not flying and that did not appeal to me so i pulled the plug and got out of active duty and moved up to Washington State where I did, was able to keep flying in the Navy as a reservist up at Whidbey Island. And so I was trying to get into the airlines at the same time and the airlines, they, they hire, they furlough, they hire, they furlough. And man, like it's all about timing. So my timing wasn't all that great. It took me about a year and a half to two years to get into the, uh, the airlines, because think about that time, that was 2004. That was when everybody was coming off from the 9-11 and the airline industry was just, you know, super, super like depressed, if you will. And they weren't hiring. So I just plugged it out with the, uh, with the uh, reserve squadron and kept putting in my resumes and attending um, these, these events to try to get an in at an airline. So that's what I was doing. So in that time, I used my GI Bill money to go to a community college. I had like, I was only working part-time really. So I used my GI Bill money to go take welding classes. So remember, <laughs> backing up, boats and airplanes. So I wanted to do, I was like, well, if I can't get a job in the airline, I'm gonna start a business. And I've always kind of had an entrepreneur's brain. I've always kind of wanted to be my own boss. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna start up a, um, a, ba a boat building business. So. Rewind back up to good old Wrangell. My house was about a quarter of a mile from a boat shop called Svensson Marine Works. And man, they build some awesome boats in Wrangell, Alaska. They, they actually have quite the reputation for building really cool landing craft, uh, outboard jet boats, you name it, they build it. And um, I, I literally, literally walked right past their shop as a kid and watched them build these aluminum boats. So that always kind of been in the back of my mind of, of doing that. So I took these welding classes at good old Skagit Valley Community College in Mount Vernon, uh, Washington. And my goal wasn't to get certified. I wasn't gonna be a pipe welder or anything like that. I just wanted to focus on aluminum. And in the meantime there, I kind of partnered up with one of the instructors, his name is Mike Baker, and he'd been a, worked in the boat uh, manufacturing industry for over 20 years. The guy, if you name it, he's worked there and he's built boats. Anywhere from the ACB, the uh, aluminum chambered boats up in Bellingham, to work skiff, to you name it, he has worked uh, on these boats. So um, I sublet a, a shop from him and kind of hired him as uh, my kind of main fabricator and we started building a few kind of on demand um, little 16 to 18 foot outboard jet boats. So. Uh, kind of plugged away at that and I very quickly realized that when I'm paying Mike the wages that he deserves as a guy with that much experience man the margins in that skiff <laughs> go down pretty quick so there wasn't a ton of money in that for sure um, 
in the meantime, I, I got an interview with the, the place that I work right now. I don't, I don't know why everybody does it, but maybe I won't do I won't name my employer, but I got a job at the airline that I currently work at and it worked out. So then I kind of, I didn't have time for the boat thing and I saw that the margins weren't all, I didn't really give it a fair shot, but I knew that I, I had wanted to be, to, wanted to work for the airlines. It's a, it's a good gig. So now, um, Oh man, I think it's 15 years now I have worked for this airline. I have climbed up through the ranks. Uh, it's all uh, union based, so it's all just seniority. How long you been there? How many people retire over you? How many people come in under you? And I spent uh, about eight or nine years in the right seat uh, as a first officer. And then they call it upgraded, upgraded to captain about uh, six uh, years ago. And so I am an airline captain now, living the dream. The cool thing about the seniority is the more senior you get, the more days off you get, the more plush your routes are and all that kind of stuff. So that's where I am in my uh, my industry. I, they Because of the COVID stuff, they offered as many pilots as, uh, well not as many, about two to 300 pilots and an extended leave of absence on a partial pay. So that was back in the summer. I took that, I got it. Uh, so as of October, I have been off work um, getting partial pay to do nothing, to get, to enjoy life, to go snowmobiling, to build these mini boats and everything else. So that is the kind of the round the world trip of Eric Werner on how I become an airline captain and how I build the boat. So let's backtrack really quick to the boat thing. Um, I, like I said, I moved to Boise in the mid eighties and early nineties was when I was in college there. And my brother, and myself and our buddies, we'd go up to Riggins on the uh, Salmon River every spring and watch the Riggins jet boat races. And man, I knew that, that I wanted to have one of those boats. I wanted to race those marathon um, jet boats. And I plugged that in the black back of my brain. I'm like, okay, I, I don't have, I knew they were expensive. I didn't have the means to do that. I was a broke college kid paying for flying lessons, all that stuff, but I filed it in the back of my brain. I'm coming back to this for sure. So then I moved to Florida for the Navy, South Texas for the Navy, California for the Navy. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to get out and get back up to the Northwest. I wanted mountains, I wanted rain, I wanted snow, I wanted boats and snowmobiles. So that's why uh, the big reason that I got out and moved back up to the Northwest. So I'd only been, I think I'd only been back in Washington state for a year and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go watch those Riggins jet boat races again. I haven't watched them in eight years, so I'm going to go watch them again. And man, caught the, caught the bug very quickly. And then I had a job that I could actually afford a boat like that. So I kind of had to make the decision, um, the decision about a sprint boat or a marathon boat. And I kind of weighed all the options and I honestly thought that the sprint boats being that it's in a more contained kind of a smaller um more fan friendly atmosphere that it had more upside potential so i went that route i started going to a few of the races in st john washington uh, albany oregon and that kind of thing and kind of as a fan i just watched two or three of those and then i was like okay i'm ready to do this and went and bought my first sprint boat Oh man, I think that was in 2010 is when I got into the sport. I bought my first boat and raced it for, I don't know, three or four years, did an engine swap, uh, upgraded that and did pretty well right out of the bat. And But I, I always kind of knew that I wanted uh, to build my own boat, my own sprint boat, but I didn't know much about the design of them. That's why I bought one first to kind of not copy the design, but um, kind of see how they worked and see what the, the overall principles of how they worked and how they were built. So that's uh, what I did. I uh, raced that boat and started kind of doing my research on some of the other boats. And then I found, um, he's now, a, I would say a pretty good friend of mine, Burt Roberts in uh, Boise, Idaho. He was a very successful racer when I was in my kind of Navy days and his dad uh, and he had kind of both designed this boat called a Marlin hull and Bert had raced that that whole design down in New Zealand, did very well in it. And I started digging, I'm like, hey, where's where's the design to this hull? I, it's, it's interesting and I don't see a whole lot of those here in the US. Kind of dug around, called around and found the plans and I found the jig. I think they were in Ontario, Oregon and I ended up buying those 
and uh, essentially my first kit. So the bottom was already bent on the very first one. So I that's that was the first sprint boat that I built was that Marlin, and it was an exact as that design um, was. Uh, it was originally designed for is how I built it. That's how it came. So that was uh, and did pretty well in that boat. It was fast. It handled super well. I kind of tweaked it as I went and uh, got the thing dialed in pretty good. And that boat is still around. Kelly Davis, my teammate, drives it. Uh, trying to think what number he is. I think he's number 208, the 208 uh, Jolly Roger in the modified class. So that is that boat. Yeah, so in the meantime, I kind of tweaked that design a little bit. I'm like, man, I would do this different, do this different. I, I knew I just wanted to cut the weight out of it, make it as small and simple as possible. And so that's where my, my whole designs are at this point in my racing career. So that's the, that's the back fill story of um, my boat building. I built river boats and I built sprint boats and now I'm building these mini boat kits. I still have a, I think I probably have one or two more race boats that I'm going to build, maybe. <laughs> I keep saying this is my last one, but uh, anyway, uh, we'll see about that. I do, I, I have a concept in my brain that I wanna try one more um, as a kind of a spare hull, if you will. So I just thought I would give everybody that insight onto had like like I said I'm not a I'm not a major manufacturer of boats but I've built plenty of them. I feel like I know enough about the manufacturing process, how they're tacked together, how they're welded out, um how to put enough heat in them uh, to get good penetration by say cold weld all that kind of stuff i feel like i know enough about that and i've had enough guidance from guys that are absolute professionals that, to, that and I, I could say i'm a professional boat builder i i guess that's somebody who gets paid for what they're doing so um anyway i just thought i would tell my quick story since somebody had asked say hey i heard you flew f-18s i'm like i did how'd you get in boats well there you have it so that's my life story and i am sticking to it hope everybody is uh enjoying this weather <laughs> it's been crazy i i totally missed all the seattle snow and i'm kind of bummed about that since it only happens about once every three years but what is today friday i get back tonight and then i leave tomorrow for one more trip and i get back sunday night or sunday afternoon and then i'm going to have some more days to get back to the build so that honda turbo it will be fired up this coming week monday or tuesday it's going to be fired up and it's going to be on the water here soon thanks for watching